In New York, the Sanford family decides to go on vacation, so they rent a house on Long Island next to a forest. The house is beautiful, but the alcohol cabinet is locked. While the family settles down, the mother Amanda drives to town to buy groceries, and she can't help noticing Danny loading his truck with a great amount of supplies. Later, the family goes to the beach, and the daughter Rose notices a huge oil tanker ship sailing in the distance. At first, they think nothing of it, but soon they realize the ship is approaching the beach. People start to panic and run away as the ship crashes against the sand, but thankfully nobody gets hurt and the beach is closed for the day. When the family returns home, they realize the Wi-Fi is not working and there is no service on their phones or television. Amanda and her husband Clay are also surprised to see some deer in the backyard, which they see as a good omen. In the evening, Amanda hears a noise outside and suddenly someone knocks on their door. Clay gets ready to fight a potential intruder, but two people shock them by knowing their names. It turns out this is businessman George and his daughter Ruth, who are the actual owners of the house. It was George whom Amanda talked to through email to arrange the rent. He apologizes for turning up unannounced, but all phones are out. They went to the symphony in town, and on their way back to the city, there was a total power blackout. Since they live on the 14th floor and George has a bad knee, they thought they could stay in this house for tonight. Amanda hates the idea and doesn't trust them, so George tries to offer her a 50% refund and promises he and Ruth can sleep in the guest room in the basement. To prove his identity, he reveals he has the keys to the cabinet and opens it to take out an envelope, not letting the others see there is also a gun in there. The envelope has $1,000 that he offers as compensation, but Amanda is still wary, thinking he could have the keys because he is the housekeeper. Clay has to convince Amanda to give the duo a chance. George shares the alcohol from the cabinet and tells them the story of this house, explaining Danny was his contractor. He also explains his wife is away traveling for his job. Amanda interrupts him to demand an ID, but George left his wallet in his other coat, which he forgot at the theater because of the commotion. This puts Amanda on the edge because George had said he didn't know about the blackout until later. Suddenly, they hear an alarm ringing. Ruth has turned on the television and they discover that a national emergency has been issued. Now Amanda has no choice but to let the duo stay in the house. When George and Ruth go to the basement room, it is revealed George knows something because a client warned him. The next morning, Amanda wakes up to see four emergency messages on her phone. Two talk about the blackout, one mentions hackers possibly being behind it, and the last one is just random symbols. Worried, she wakes Clay up to show him the messages, but they disappear before he can see them. Clay decides to drive to town to get a newspaper for more information, however since the GPS is not working either, he soon gets lost. He stops the car and gets out to check if he can catch a signal on his phone, so he doesn't hear the car radio activating for just a few seconds. The reporter informs that the cyber attack has caused a serious environmental disaster in the south, which has impacted animal migration patterns. With no luck with the phone, Clay decides to keep on driving, and moments later he finds a woman waving her arms by the road. It seems she needs help so Clay stops the car, but the woman can only speak Spanish, and he doesn't understand her. Feeling disturbed by her pleas, Clay decides to ignore her and keep going. Suddenly he sees a drone flying nearby with red smoke on its tail so he speeds up, but when the drone comes closer, Clay realizes the smoke is actually red leaflets. Meanwhile, George also drives out to visit the neighbors, keeping his gun at hand. He keeps checking his phone because he hasn't heard from his wife since yesterday and she was supposed to fly back today. Sadly, not a single message has been delivered. The neighbor's house seems to be empty, and strangely there are tons of random things spread in the garden. The door was left open, so he goes inside and finds a complete mess. George tries using the neighbor's satellite phone, but it is not working either, which means all American satellites are down. When he is about to leave, he notices there are more things spread near the beach, so he follows the trail and finds an expensive watch in the sand. When he tries to pick it up, he is shocked to find a whole arm and falls, only to discover the body of a pilot. As he looks around, he realizes a plane has crashed on the beach. At that moment he hears another plane coming closer, so he runs away and hides in the house right before this plane crashes too. At the house, Rose is very frustrated because she wants to watch television but none of the devices are working. She runs outside and is shocked to find a huge amount of deer in the backyard. She convinces her brother Archie to go to the forest, where they find an old shed. They go inside, 
and Archie tells Rose that someone must live there and can watch her sleep through the window. Rose gets startled and accidentally hits her head as she realizes that Archie is just messing with her. On their way back to the house, Archie is bitten by a bug and Rose sees another deer. She also notices all the birds flying away. When George comes back, he admits to Amanda that he had guessed something was coming because he saw the market behaving weirdly. As he explains what he saw on the beach, their conversation is interrupted when they start hearing explosions in the distance, followed by a loud screeching noise that hurts their ears and cracks the windows. Amanda immediately rushes into the woods to find her children, but the noise becomes so unbearable that she drops to her knees in pain. Luckily, the noise ends soon, and everyone goes back into the house. Amanda remembers he saw Danny buying too much stuff, and thinks he also knew something would happen. At that moment, Clay comes back and shows them a leaflet, which turns out to be written in Persian. Archie recognizes it from more video games, and explains it says death to America. Terrified, Amanda and Clay decide to go to a relative's house in New Jersey, ignoring George's warnings. As they drive away, they keep hearing sirens, and eventually they find the road blocked by a bunch of white cars. Amanda goes ahead to investigate and notices there are no people around. In fact, all these cars are the same self-driving model and brand new. Suddenly more automatic cars appear behind them, so Amanda rushes back to her family and moves her vehicle just in time before the speeding cars crash into the ones blocking the road. The family goes away as they dodge more incoming cars, and in the distance it can be seen that the mess goes all the way into the city. The Sanfords have no choice but to go back to the house, and George allows them to stay. As it starts to rain, Archie stays in his room to get naughty while looking at pictures he took of Ruth. But he starts feeling sick and decides to sleep instead. Ruth invites Clay to smoke with her, and Clay admits feeling bad for leaving the poor woman on the road. Suddenly they hear a splashing noise and discover there are flamingos in the pool inside. Amanda and George share a drink, and George makes a confession. He came to this house because a powerful client who works for the Pentagon told him that an evil cabal runs the world. That client asked George to move around his money out of the blue and said that he was going away for a while, which made George realize that something was about to happen. Tired of all this depressing talk, George takes Amanda to the room with his music collection, and they dance for a while. They get too close and share a hug, so Amanda points out they are drunk and have spouses. George agrees not to do anything, but he also fears that his wife is probably dead. At that moment, the screeching sound begins ringing again breaking all the lights and scaring the flamingos away. Now they have to use candles for light, and each family decides to share a bed for comfort. The next morning, they realize Rose is missing, and she may have taken one of the bikes. Suddenly Archie wakes up with a fever and starts puking blood. When he checks his mouth, he's shocked to discover all his teeth are falling. Archie thinks it has to do with the bug bite, so George volunteers to take Clay and a puking Archie to see Danny, and ask for medicine while Amanda and Ruth go into the woods to look for Rose. After lots of searching to no avail, Ruth and Amanda take a break at the shed, only to start arguing. Neither of them likes the other very much, and an argument ensues, but by sharing their worries, at least they manage to understand each other a little better. At that moment they hear a strange noise indicating something moving outside. Amanda comes out and sees bike tracks, but when she is about to follow them, she hears a noise again, and discovers Ruth surrounded by a herd of deer. With no hesitation, Amanda rushes to Ruth's side and starts yelling at the deer, prompting Ruth to do the same. The trick works and the deer run away, so Amanda and Ruth hug each other for comfort. Meanwhile, the men arrive at Danny's place, but to their shock, Danny makes them step back and comes out with a weapon in hand. He explains the same noise happened in Cuba a few years ago and caused radiation, so that's probably what made Archie sick. He also knows that the Russians recalled their people from Washington, so he assumes they are at war. However, Danny doesn't care if George is an old friend, and Clay is willing to pay. His priority is to help his own family, so he refuses to help them. If they want help, he thinks they should go to the neighbors, who are supposed to have a bunker. George refuses to leave without the medicine, so he takes out his gun, and an argument ensues as they aim at each other. Clay moves to get between them, and admits he's a useless man but he begs for the medicine as he gives a speech about him and Danny having one thing in common. They just want to protect their families. Danny finally agrees and gives them the medicine in exchange for money. While Archie has the medicine, Danny shares some more information. This was done by the Koreans. Clay responds by showing him the leaflet to prove is the Iranians, but Danny has more intel. 
Before the phones went out, a friend of his in San Diego told him a drone dropped leaflets there too, but those were in some East Asian language like Korean or Chinese. The friend is a veteran of Iraq, so he would have recognized it if it had been Persian. Danny's theory is that since the U.S. has lots of enemies, they are teaming up to destroy the country. The guys return to the car and George admits that Danny's information confirms a rumor he heard before. This is a three-stage maneuver used to destroy a country's government from the inside. First, they isolate citizens by disabling all their communication and transportation. This makes people scared, causing stage two, synchronized chaos. As it happened with Danny, people will start turning on each other to survive and won't trust any information outlets, which would be fed by hackers and things like the leaflets. Then stage three will happen on its own. Citizens will end up planning a coup or a civil war, which collapses the country. Clay and George agree to stick together and take their families to the neighbor's bunker. In the woods, Amanda and Ruth keep searching for Rose, only to freeze when they see the skyline of Manhattan on fire as explosions and gunfire are heard all over the city. Meanwhile, it is revealed that Rose has been in the neighbor's house all along. She broke the front door to get in and she is now enjoying lots of food, but she stops when she hears her mother calling out her name. Rose is about to leave, but then notices a light coming from the basement, so she follows it and finds the emergency bunker stocked with everything that a person could possibly need, including a gym and a greenhouse. There's also an emergency alert system, which suggests seeking shelter because the White House and major U.S. cities are under attack, causing radiation levels to rise near many population centers. Rose discovers there is a huge collection of DVDs that includes Mo. Vise, so she grabs the disc and finally gets to watch her favorite. 